This is my brew kit. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My brew kit is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. Without me, my brew kit is useless. Without my brew kit, I am useless. I must boil my brew kit true. I must brew better than my enemy who is trying to outbrew me. I must mash in before he mashes in. I will. My brew kit and I know that what counts in beer is not the sugars we release, the temperature of our mash, nor the steam we make. We know that is the stars that count. We will untap. My brew kit is human, even as I, because it is my life. Thus, I will learn it as a brother. I will learn its weaknesses, its strength, its parts, its accessories, its hoses, and its valves. I will keep my brew kit clean and ready even as I am ready, and we will become part of each other. We will. Before God, I swear this creed, my Brukit and I are the defenders of the alehouse. We are the masters of our enemy. We are the saviors of my life. So be it until victory is ours and there is no enemy but yeast. Happy weekend, 18th of March, it's Saturday, um, Mother's Day tomorrow, my birthday next week, so I'm taking it easy, I think, this weekend. We've got a big load of beer in the tank um, at the brewery, which we brewed last weekend, a double brew of Mergi, so this weekend the intention was not to brew. However, uh, I noticed a post on the BrewTube official Facebook page, um, I think it was Sarah that posted the message, it was Sarah Pantry. Um, Okay, you lot, that'll be us then. Here's the deal. Graham Preston and I have not brewed for a while due to reasons, so we've agreed to a challenge. I want to extend that challenge to all of you folks. You've got a month to brew a beer and post a video of your brew day. And I haven't done a brew day video for a while. You've seen bits of brew days, um, but I thought I'd do one here. Dusted off the homebrew kit, um, just been to the brewery, got all the ingredients together. If you haven't seen that yet, I've took, we took some clips of it. Um, I'm going to brew and what I'm brewing is um, we've got our three slash four core beers now the three cask beers um, a four percent ish hoppy pale we've got a four percent ish best bitter we've got a four percent ish oatmeal stout and then we've got the single keg beer which is a 5.8 American pale with lots of cascade in um, it's two things I'm being asked for by a few pubs now one is a lager which I don't fancy making yet it's going to take up um, a lot of equipment time that we really need to rotate the, the gear a lot quicker. Um, but I'm thinking about how we might manage that. And the second one I've been asked for is, um, is a hazy 5%er. So that's the plan for today is to just really try and start getting my head around that. So I've gathered together some, um, some grain from the brewery. I've got some hops in the brewery. I'll talk you through that now and then we'll get cracking. This is up to temp already, so we're ready to go. And here is the greens. So this is, I just mixed this down at the brewery. 77% um, crisp extra pale, 10% crisp malted oats, 10% crisp wheat malt, and 3% caramel malt 30, also crisp. Uh, I'll put the recipe below, but maybe don't brew it until we know what it tastes like. Hopefully it'll be okay, we'll see. Um, additionally, hops, we're going. I've not really fully explored talus, so I'm gonna go single hop. Talus from Get A Brood. Other retailers are available, but they're pretty good. Uh, I've got some water treatments ready to go in. Mostly calcium chloride, a little bit of gypsum, a little bit of Epsom. Um, the water around here is pretty flat, so uh, we can make it into whatever we want. Stole the sanitizer from work, from the brewery. Some tools, refractometer, duct tape, very important. Uh, and that's your lot. Firstly, pump's got the wrong ends on. I was using it for some. I was using it for something else down at the brewery. So we're just going to get those off and replace them with the um, quick release bayonets that I use on the on the hoses.
Easy peasy. Already, I've bust it. I don't know if that was broken before or not. Um, I'm not happy with that because all the electricals are under there. So, fortunately, I knew it would come in handy. I didn't know what for, but I knew I was going to need it. Let's give that a quick uh, bodge repair. Ta-da! You never know. Good as new. I've also nicked a bag. I use these for the hot um, additions in the copper at the brewery so we don't get all the residue in the bottom to, uh, to deal with because there's not really a meaningful whirlpool on that, on that copper. So, um, and using them in the mash as well. I know it's got a basket, but using one of these inside the basket I find really helps with the cleanup. Um, so they're all been washed and done. That's just the right size to go in. So let's drop that in as well. Hot, yeah, hot, Ooh, hot. Not the pump off. So now she looks like this. She looks like that. I've just got the pump going at the moment just to recirculate the heat. We were at 69.5 and, and that was just with the water static, not moving. Now I've turned the pump on. Things have equalized a little bit and we're at 68.9. So we'll just give that another couple of minutes and we'll get the grain in. Aha, first of all, water treatments. For me, I mentioned this before, but it's basically 10 grams-ish calcium chloride. Three grams of gypsum, three, 3.3 grams of gypsum, if that matters. 3.3 grams also of Epsom salt, Epsom salt, as opposed to the printer manufacturer, which it isn't. Try and get the uh, calcium doodah crystals to dissolve a little bit. Calcium chloride. The water here has got, it's flat, there's nothing in it. Very low in everything. So we've got a good blank canvas to work from. We're not so far from the brewery, it's very slightly different. There's a bit more calcium at the brewery, a bit less here. Right, that is done. It is equalised. We're now at 69. 69 degrees in there right now. Um, if we get the grain in, we should drop to 60... What did I say? 66? 66? 67. What are we doing it at? We're going for 67. Um, so, let's get the pump off and get the grains in. I would normally put it in in stages, but I can't be bothered. So I've just chucked it all in. Uh, and it's looking good already. Not very clumpy. Um, the reason for that is I'm doing this as a no sparge, full volume mash. Uh, I should get 30 litres into the fermenter. Um, and again, depending on the, on the dry hop, and hoping for a corny keg and a bit out of this one, I'll just potentially bottle the last couple of uh, dribbles, um, just to compare the oxidization, oxidation, oxidization, one or the other. 
with, um, with the keg version, which I will try to do with as little oxygen ingress as possible. I'm also going to add some ascorbic acid to this as well. Um, again, just to make sure we can keep the oxygen at bay as much as possible. It is an experiment. We might scale it or modify it a couple of times and then scale it, but we'll see. Right, that's looking lovely. It's smelling awesome. So I'm gonna get this pipe out and start a bit of a recirc. Then we can check the pH in a minute. And I'll let her roll for 60 minutes. Little bit of a clean up. Only in case Sarah, my wife, comes in and starts complaining that I'm messing the kitchen up again. She's not had to put up with this for a long time. Well, a year at least. Looking good. Right, one hour, start the clock. And while we wait, a pint of Most and Dragon Best Bitter. Cheers. Right, one hour is up. Um, it's a full volume mash, as I said before. We're just going to turn the pump off, which is off. I'm going to shut off the valves to the pump so we don't get any dribbles and stuff. And then we can carefully place that onto the cooker. And get this mesh bag. Sort of knotted and then with my teflon fingers and my assistant elliot we'll lift this out we've got a handle but it springs out a lot so i'm just gonna have to try and lift it out this is probably what is it six six point something kilos of soaking wet grain so it's a bit of a lift All right one two three make okay one two three oh. ta-da let me show you. Thank you, Elliot. So we're now draining. It's a good murky color, just what we need for a hazy. So I'm just gonna let that drain while we heat, while we heat up. So uh, we're gonna set that to uh, automatic, 100%. And if you listen carefully, you might be able to hear it starting. So now we wait. 99 degrees is more than that. That's more than, oh, wow. That's more than 99. Yeah, a bit of a calibration error, I think. We'll sort that out next time. Um, so that's just really got to a ripping boil. So 30 minutes, first hop edition. Most of the hops today are um, in the hop stand, 78 degrees after we finished. So we'll return in another 30. Right, first hop edition is 25 grams of tallers. Oh, turn the scale on first, it would help. Can we do it one-handed? No, that's way too many. Twenty-five. Okay, that's thirty minutes complete. Let's get these in. Right, boil is done. We are one hour. Um, the pump's running, uh, has been for the last 10, 15 minutes or so, just to sanitize. No protoflock in, because it's hazy, so it kind of defeats the point really, I think. 
Um, we have a cold supply pipe and a return pipe from the heat exchanger copper coily thing, which is in there. And just about to knock the heat off. And we'll start to reduce the heat down to uh, 78, whoa, 78 degrees. Don't want to lose that hose. Uh, 78 degrees so we can add the Whirlpool hops, hop stand, hops. So the cool down has started. We've got a good egg drop soup going on in there. Um, working towards 78 degrees. I've not checked the temperature yet because it's only been running in a few minutes. We're probably still upwards of 90. Um, I'll check it in a second. And as soon as we're at 78, we'll get the hops in. Okay, next hops, we are now at 78, 79 degrees. So we want 150 grams of talus again. to go with the 25 that we put in the boil. Forty three, one forty seven, one forty eight. Oh, bust. One forty nine, one fifty, one forty nine. I think one forty nine is close enough. Let's chuck them in. And we'll leave those to steep for thirty. Right, that is the hop stand complete, and we're now dropping down from 78 to pitching temperature, 20 or so. Currently at 34. Uh, still looking nice, and the colour's lovely, actually. Don't know if this camera does it justice, but this is going to be a nice colour, I think, in the fermenter. Hopefully in the glass, actually. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, sanit sanitised fermenter is ready to receive. Um, Borrowed the paracetic acid spray from the brewery, so no foam uh, star sand as normal here. Uh, a little bit easier to work with, but it's nasty, horrible stuff. So you've got to dilute it properly. Um, yeah, so we're just waiting now for the remaining 10 or 12 degrees. We'll get it in the fermenter um, and then we'll chuck a bit of yeast in. Come on! 23.4 23.3 Okie dokes down to 18.7 I've actually had the pub pump running because uh, I was getting different heat at different levels so I just wanted to circulate the wort a little bit so we're just going to have to let it settle for well it has actually been settling for a couple of minutes um, Fermenter is sanitised so we'll get that on the floor where it needs to be um, and we can drain into it. I don't use the pump for this, never have. Um, don't know why. Fills it a bit quicker, but doesn't seem to make any difference. So we'll just disconnect that hose from the pump, drop it into there. Uh, and then once things have fully settled out, we'll just let it drain through gravity naturally. What is the time now, by the way? 7.30, wait for my Chinese to arrive. Look at that color. Incredible. So, let's dump it in. This is the part where you realize you've left the tap open. Fingers crossed, I haven't. That is one muddy fermenter. There's plenty of crap left behind. All the hop residue. So, uh, oh, fingers crossed. Let's get up on the worktop, we'll get the yeast in. And we're done. 30 litres in. I've put the yeast in, you didn't see me do that. Um, SO4. Um, it's in now, so it's too late, but now I'm concerned because SO4 sometimes goes off a bit vigorously and there ain't a lot of headroom in this fermenter, so uh, we'll be standing it on some towels and stuff just to absorb any, uh, uh, the well, inevitable blowout that's going to happen. Um, you, can't, you can't quite see the bottom, but there is a good inch of um, gunk, which 
I suspect is as we didn't add any protoflock and it didn't drop out fully in the uh, in the kettle, but that's okay. For fermentation, we'll deal with it and it'll compact down nicely at the end. So two weeks in the fridge, gonna set it at about 18 degrees um, and I will come back to you with the results and a bit of a taste test possibly. I don't do many taste tests. I'm no Jilly Goulden, I can't find the words. Oh, fruity, hazy. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, we'll get this moved and then I'm gonna clean that mess up. Thanks for watching. And if you fancy making a video, uh, you know, Sarah's challenge, I think, um, reminded me that I'd not brewed at home for quite some time. Um, and I'd not videoed a brew day for a while either. So uh, if you've got the time, get a video together, stick it onto YouTube. I'd love to watch it. Thanks guys. See you next time.